This is my wife Mary's Christmas present this year, the Cricut Explore Air, which is a home die-cutting machine. So I had always thought this was pronounced cry-cut, which rhymes with die-cut, but apparently it is actually Cricut. I thought I'd give it a try because I wanted to make some vinyl covers for my bass guitar's pick guard and the little guard that goes on the headstock. So I threw it into the scanner. The provided software doesn't do a very good job cutting down images into a cuttable shape, even if you spend a lot of time trying to smooth it out. So instead, I used GIMP to create a path just using the image as a guide. Uh, and then you can export those paths. Uh, one weird thing about the Cricut software is that it assumes that everything has 72 pixels per inch, so I had to scale down the image resolution in order to get the output to come up as the right size inside their software. I exported all of the paths to SVG files, and so you can see here the comparison uh, between the 300 dpi normal scan and the scaled down version. The uh, Cricut software just blows the other one up way too large because if you look at the source files, the one on the left is the original and the one on the right is scaled down. Uh, it just assumes that the view box is expressed in pixels when the SVG already tells you exactly what size the scan was. It, it just ignores the width and height properties of the SVG file. So that's one thing they definitely could fix. Um, so what gets exported is two different paths in the SVG file and then you need to use their function in order to cut which is just subtracting the whole SVG path from the overall pattern uh, which produces uh, a couple of shapes one is the holes the portion of the headstock shape that's uh, covered by the holes and then the portion of the headstock shape that's not covered up by the holes which is what we actually want so you subtract those two and then only uh, the sliced image is actually useful the other two now are uh, throwaway so you can delete those layers and what you end up with is the right shape this is actually pretty annoying it's a technically good piece of software it's pretty performant but I'd much rather be able to import a shape that already has the holes cut out of it so I don't need to mess around inside their software. So there's a couple different ways to get around that. One is uh, to take the raw SVG file and you can see that the two paths are here exported from GIMP and I can just take my holes path and combine it with my body path and in order to get this to work properly every time what you're going to need to do is make the outer shape in one direction in this case counterclockwise and then make the inner shapes in the opposite direction uh, clockwise which is just the order in which you draw the points in GIMP. The other way to do it is to use merge visible paths in GIMP so that the exported SVG file has only one path in it and that also works it results in an SVG that has holes in it and then you need to position your shape with the software onto the 12 by 12 bed. In this case I just wanted to use some grid paper so that I knew when I started using vinyl it's gonna come out and it's gonna fit. Here you can see the print. Uh, this is not sped up at all. Uh, if you're just using a raster images such as based on a scan that you're just cutting using their software it's gonna have little jagged edges and be very slow but this is super fast so you can see it just is tracing the path with the knife and then it's cutting the holes that's it it's already done so really really fast and smooth if you have a smooth path defined which is why you it's really beneficial to have an SVG file as opposed to an image that's scanned. So then you just need to separate the paper from the sticky backing. You can see here the hole where uh, my pick guard shape uh, was cut out. And these shapes fit really, really well right onto the headstock piece and pick guard of my Thunderbird bass guitar. So far it's worked really well and Mary really loves it, so I, I think I can give the Explore Air a hearty recommendation.
at one point there was two pieces of third party software that could communicate with the cricket the maker of cricket which is provo craft were able to force these other companies to settle not supporting their product anymore on the grounds that provo craft had intentionally obfuscated the bluetooth and usb interface to their product therefore these other third party companies must have violated the end user agreement in order to create these interfaces in order to work with their product and that violated Cricket's copyright. So hopefully if you're able to use other software well enough you can at least get it to the point where you don't have to use any of the functions in Cricket's software. All you have to do is produce exactly the shape you want to end up with, upload it to their web app, and then print it out. Please ProRoCraft Stop suing people for using the product that you sold them, unobfuscate your interface, and also actually read the width and height of SVG files. That would make me happy if you could do that.